Hello, I'm David Shields, the McClintock Professor of Southern Letters in the Department of English at the University of South Carolina, and I'm one of the advisors to the SIMS initiatives. We're a digital humanities project of the university libraries, funded in part by a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In a celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we're reading one of Sims's ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling, or Murder Will Out, and it's part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam and the Cabin. At the point in the story where we've just left off, James Grayling has led the authorities to the site of his ghostly encounter in the swamp but has been unable to produce Major Spencer's body or any evidence of foul play. His desperate attempt to vindicate his friend continues in part 18 of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling or Murder Will Out. But lo, a marvel such it seemed at the first blush to all the party. While they stood confounded and indecisive, undetermined in which way to move, a sudden flight of wings was heard, even from the center of the bay. At a little distance above the spot where they had striven for entrance, they looked up and beheld about 50 buzzards those notorious domestic vultures of the South, ascending from the interior of the bay and perching along the branches of the loftier trees by which it was overhung. Even were the character of these birds less known, the particular business in which they had just been engaged was betrayed by the huge gobbets of flesh which some of them had borne aloft in their flight and still continued to rend with beak and bill as they tottered upon the branches where they stood. A piercing scream issued from the lips of James Grayling as he beheld this sight and strove to scare the offensive birds from their repast. The poor major! The poor major! was the involuntary and agonized exclamation of the youth. Did I ever think that he would come to this? The search, thus guided and encouraged, was pressed with renewed diligence and spirit. And at length, an opening was found through which it was evident that a body of considerable size had recently gone. The branches were broken from the small shrub trees and the undergrowth trodden into the earth. They followed this path, and as the case commonly with waste tracts of this description, the density of the growth diminished sensibly at every step they took, till they reached a little pond, which though circumscribed an area and full of cypresses, yet proved to be singularly deep. Indeed, it was an alligator hole, where in all probability a numerous tribe of these reptiles had their dwelling. Here, on the edge of the pond, they discovered the object which had drawn the keen-sighted vultures to their feast. In the body of a horse, which James Grayling at once identified as that of Major Spencer. The carcass of the animal was already very much torn and lacerated. The eyes were plucked out and the animal completely disemboweled. Yet on examination, it was not difficult to discover the manner of his death. This had been affected by firearms. Two bullets had passed through his skull just above the eyes, 
either of which must have been fatal. The murderer had led the horse to the spot and committed the cruel deed where his body was found. The search was now continued for that of the owner, but for some time it proved ineffectual. At length, the keen eyes of James Grayling detected amidst a heap of moss and green sedge that rested beside an overthrown, overthrown tree whose branches jutted into the pond a whitish but discolored object that did not seem native to the place. Bestriding the fallen tree, he was unable to reach this object, which, with a burst of grief, he announced to the distant party was the hand and arm of his unfortunate friend the wristband of the shirt being the conspicuous object which had first caught his eye. Grasping this, he drew the course, which had been thrust beneath the branches of the tree to the surface, and with the assistance of his uncle, it was finally brought to the dry land. Here, it underwent a careful examination. This has been part 18 of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling or Murder Will Out. I'll, I hope you'll turn in next time for another section of this tense tale. If you'd like to read the full text of this story or any of the many other works that uh, William Gilmore Sims uh, wrote, which are available on the website, simply visit the Sims Initiative's web website at sims.library.sc.edu. And until then, happy Halloween.